so I guess that the engagement and and the work that we've been doing uh, with with backstage ADB stems from an overall desire to um, effectively foster reuse and make reuse a core part of the way we build software. Yeah, uh, th this sounds maybe you know uh, uh, kind of obvious, right? Um, but ultimately, uh, as as we go through and look at um, the 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 practices of software, the kind of tooling that we use, um, the kind of te tools and techniques that we deploy, we come to the conclusion that potentially we're not doing as much reuse as we possibly could, and that has a, a number of detrimental effects in terms of the the end product namely that we keep on you know creating new solutions for problems that are already understood and solved so it's in that light that we've decided to uh, and if the screen changes yep we've decided to put together um a reuse manifesto that ultimately I guess, intends to convey and explain what our ethos is and what we're trying to do and achieve and what type of behaviors we expect out of our engineering population in, in, in the context that we're talking about. So I, I do not propose to basically read through this uh, with you or anything, but ultimately is basically just to provide a flavor and, and to basically say that we're kind of serious about this and and this is something that we very much want to be at the forefront um, of of our engineering practices and and uh, and basically we're prepared to invest in the tooling to make it happen yeah um, this is we go from there to a um uh, i guess uh, those of those of us, and I expect that it's most, if not uh, more, everyone in this call um, familiar with the the uh, the Agile Manifesto. Kind of recognizes the format and um, and, and sees where uh, where this this kind of came from. So we tried to align to the same format and to basically try to put in front of people a, a kind of a set of choices, I suppose, between thing, things that on the left-hand side we are favoring um, and then thing, over things on the right-hand side, which um, we've observed in the past as, as things that people do um, and which we want to get away from doing. Yeah. Um, so going, going through this process, um, is 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 has been something with our engineering population has been something that has been um, well on one hand quite rewarding on the other hand quite quite challenging for all the obvious reasons that you can think of, um, but ultimately it takes us to a place where we try to uh, effectively explain to people what exactly is in is in it for them in the context of reuse, what benefits do we get as an overall, uh, as, as an overall organization and how it contributes effectively to the growth uh, of both people as professionals and software engineers, and on the other hand, how it contributes ultimately to the, the delivery of better software as part of what we do for a living. So these three slides that I just whizzed through are, are kind of setting the scene and, and motivation. When we come to the discussion, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have on them. But ultimately, these are just scene setters for the, the basic thing and then kind of the focus of what we, what we are talking about today which in this diagram is effectively the left-hand side, which is the inventory and the catalog. So effectively, 
um, the, re the, the reuse catalog containing the assets that, that we want to reuse, and the piece that connects that to the support and governance in the middle, um, since the, the thing that we want to, dem to demo today actually is intended to address, um, I guess, one use case that might not have been uh, immediately apparent to to Spotify when they um, when they release the tool, but which kind of relates to the fact that basically Spotify as an organization uh, being inherently open and and having uh, a, a very open structure, I suppose, um, basically created a catalog or um, in in our parlance and uh, an inner sourcing portal. Um, that is open for to everyone for creation and modification of the items that sit in there, right? Um, as I guess, um, as regulated entities, it, it's not really <laughs> um, uh, viable for us to have a catalog that operates under the same level of openness. Yeah. So one of the things that we've had to do is to basically instrument it, if you will, um, to basically support um, processes around uh, uh, scrutiny of adding new items to the catalog and scrutiny of basically driving modifications or registering modifications to those. So the demo that I'm primarily going to give you today relates to how we went around and leveraged the existing tools so like your standard JIRA, your standard, um, uh, I guess, Bitbucket, um, and so forth and control systems to solve that particular problem. One additional thing that we'll also try to touch on is basically the discovery journey and, and various different flavors of the discovery journey, because that's something that we've invested in, uh, in as well, um, and which not diverge, but I guess augment and complement the, the original vision of Spotify as they put together the tool. Um, so I'm going to pause there for a second and ask whether there are any immediate questions, or if not, then I'll go straight into um, demonstrating uh, the, the features that I described. I assume not so. Right, so what you can, what you should be able to see now is uh, basically one, uh, 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 an instance that we've created um, for just for the purposes of, of this demo. So the way this is, this is organized uh, is the standard toolbar on the left. There's a number of, of options in here, most relating to search and, and, and the catalog itself. Um, the taxonomy piece, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit later, um, and, and other items that I'm, I'm not going to focus on because they go beyond the scope of this demo. The piece that I'd like to talk to you about today re relates to the registration of a new entity in the catalog. So like I mentioned in the, in the original Spotify implementation, what you find is um, a button that basically uh, uh, allows you to register um, new, new components and it's a button that by default anyone can click. Yeah. Um, so by being a button that by default everyone can click means that it doesn't, you could have changes to the items that are entered that are not necessarily supported, appropriate, accurate, or, 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 or even required. Okay. So what we've done in this context is to utilize the scaffolding capabilities of, of Backstage itself and create a component that supports the registration of a new item in the catalog. So the process is relatively straightforward. Um, so ultimately what happens is that 
um, you go through a, a wizard-like experience in which you add the items and, and, uh, and attributes that are required. Once that is done, um, the, the, the YAML file that backs the item is automatically created and stored in a, uh, in a, in, in a repository, so a Bitbucket repository. A pull request is raised on that um, for review, which enlists the right resources or the right people to review it and also enlist an automated bot that basically validates some some um, some items um, in 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 the data that that was entered. If the uh, the pull request uh, is then subsequently approved, the item is registered in the catalog after a little latency because obviously it's done by scanning, and it's then present in the catalog for um, for search and and review. So very quickly, I'm just going to go through it. Um, I'm going to very simply create the component. Um, I'm basically going to say it's a library. Um, I'm going to say it's the, the if this for, so just provide the name and other item. Okay, um, we assign an owner to it. We assign a life cycle. So these are the three standard life cycle items or states that uh, that come with um, with backstage. So we just go production just to say. Um, we'll we'll add um, just a random. Um, A random URL. So this is where you enter a URL that contains additional information. Um, we assign a classification, and but this will become apparent. Uh, uh, the use of this will become apparent when I when I show you the taxonomy piece later. Uh, I'm basically going to say that uh, this this belongs to libraries. Um, I'm going to just leave tags and tech docs uh, not not filled, and this is not a tech product. So, ultimately, what I what I've just gone through is basically tell um, tell the catalog that I have um, a new item uh, with some information, a name, and a description, um, and I'm just going to hit create on that. And it's now going through the process that I that I described earlier, um, and it's now done. Okay, so effectively, what happened was it created uh, the the YAML file, it created a branch in our version control system, it published the YAML to 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 Bitbucket, um, it created a pull request, it reviewed it and found no errors. So everything was approved and, uh, and, and it's now available, okay? So we're just gonna open the pull request. Uh, sorry about that, I should have logged in previously. Uh, Okay, so um, as you can see, there's the bot there that that reviews the the data. Basically, says, "Yep, it's approved. There's nothing wrong with it. We didn't find we didn't find any errors." So I'm going to be naughty, add myself as an approver, approve it, merge it, and it's now done. Okay, so it it is now. Going, to, it is now going to be available uh, in the catalog. Um, I just have to do a little operation here to basically make sure that is present. And and as 
you can you can see you can see it there now. Okay, so another item created as uh, basically all all the other all the other attributes are as per what I entered. Um, ultimately, uh, there's an asset classification associated with it. Um, the rest of it, I'm I'm not gonna go very much through it because so since uh, as i mentioned in the beginning this is an empty instance so for the purposes of this demo so relations etc is not something that i can demo right now because that that would imply creating a lot of other structures that we just don't have at the moment okay um so this is the creation process what this allows you to do is to continue to gather the um the, the information that you require for registration in Backstage directly in, 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 in Backstage to harvest all that, all that information and record it safely. And at that point to utilize standard software development processes like pull requests and, rev and automated reviews to review the information, review the pull request for, uh, for appropriate information make sure that it's a, it's something that you want to admit to the catalog and once that the pull request is approved it just gets merged and things um effectively the item appears uh, uh in the catalog at that point um but with the advantage that it has gone through a verification and validation process and and thus um it is then compliant to the type of um, I guess validation for I processes, etc., that the, several of our regulators would expect in something that is utilized uh, across the engineering population. So before I go to the next piece, I'm just going to pause there and ask whether there are any questions at this point. I, I have some questions. I don't know if this is a good time or not, but maybe for the demo that you just did. On those asset types, was that customizable or was this sort of built in? What, if you could sort of de detail, like what parts were customized by Deutsche Bank and what is sort of like out of the box from backstage? Mm, okay, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, so let me just go back for a second. Uh, right, so the, the workflow was shown here is, is our workflow so this the backstage didn't really um provide uh, a, a a default workflow like this that you could leverage yeah um in terms in terms of which items here are um are are uh, i guess native for want of a better term so the the obviously the user attribute is native the asset types, component types, and categories. Um, let me let me just put that there. They say it's a component. Again, I will go with library again. Sorry about that. It's just to make it make it faster. So all of these um, are um, are backstage by default. Name and description. Name one. Description one. All these come by default as well. Ownership and life cycle are default attributes in, um, so out of the box attributes in backstage. Links um, are, uh, yeah, this is our actually, oh, it needs one. So let me, let me be an equal opportunity search engine user and go for Bing at this point for this one. Uh, yeah. Um, now, up to now, everything has been um, native stroke def uh, existing attributes with backstage. When you come into taxonomy classifications, the, these are customized by us. Yeah. So these ones we introduced in order to be able to associate reuse items or catalog items to various different types of taxonomies. And the reason 
why we've done that is because we wanted to have an, um, two distinct options in terms of the, the item discovery journey. Yeah. So what I mean by item discovery journey is you're an engineer, you have a specific, uh, a specific question or, or a specific problem you're trying to solve. Um, you know you have a catalog of items that can help you solve it. You're now in, uh, there's a, a fork in the road, right? And that fork in the road is, bas is based on how you're going to discover the thing that can help you, yeah? There are two ways that you can do it. One is you either know the name of the thing or some a term that appears in the thing's description, yeah? And that basically lends itself well to the type of search that, uh, that Backstage offers by default in which um, you, you basically uh, just type a, a, I don't know, um, message. And, and basically it gives you everything that is in there that has the word message in it. So, and that's fine. Um, but now there's another type of discovery and that's the other branch in the road, which is you don't know what the thing is called, but you know what the thing does. Yeah. And for knowing what the thing does, but know what it's called, the search that Backstage offers by default isn't great. Yeah. Because it doesn't allow you to do the discovery in terms of, I'm going to use the term, a taxonomy or classification of the items that explains what they do or how they fit together in some kind of system okay so this step seven captures that information yeah and that information uh, i'm just gonna add something in here uh i'm just gonna say code um next step uh, just to finish the uh the wizard and then I'll show you, not this one, but the other one that's already created. So that, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly take care of the pull request uh, and myself. Uh, merge, merge. Um, it's fine. So bear with me while I do this, just to make sure it's in the catalog. Uh, okay. Fine. So if you recall, I signed it to code, right? So what you what this view presents, and we've basically create this, created this just for this demo, right? This isn't really a real taxonomy, but it, it, should, it, it should allow us to illustrate the concept, right? If I want to find out um, about the item there, I can look into code, yeah? So I don't know that it's called name one. I don't need to know the owner, I know it's code. So everything that is categorized as code will appear here. If I want to see libraries, and if you recall, that's, um, you'll basically see ftest4, which is the one that I previously created before. And I assigned a library taxonomy entry to it. And ultimately, if I know it's a library, this lists every single library. Right. And so what this is intended to do is to say, if I'm looking for something to help me with workflow, I come here. It, with security, I come there. Data models, it's this one. Um, documentation, that one. It, so like I said, it's not a real taxonomy. It's just something that we put together um, to illustrate the concept. But ultimately, what this allows you to do is to direct the search via 
what the thing is or does rather than direct the search via some word that actually exists either in the name or in the description. Does that answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. Because I was, you know, I was asking like what you had customized, and so I think you covered covered that well in terms of this. This taxonomy was sort of new. It looks like there's some questions in the chat that you could answer further about taxonomy. But my original question, sure. Yep. All right. Thank you. Uh, and I'm sorry, I I can't actually see the chat at the moment. That's so, okay, Miguel. Just to let you know that once you're finished your demo, we can go into the full Q and A because we usually have that on Chatham House rules anyway. So we'll we'll definitely have time to cover those later. Okay, okay. So I guess at this stage, um, I it's thirty-two minutes. So I'm gonna, um, in order to leave time for for the conversation, in terms of what I wanted to show here, it's mostly there. I guess that um, just just for completeness' sake, um, we we've created. Um, basically, there's two more wizards that that were created, um, which basically talk about deregistration, so effectively removal or deletion, and update, which basically allows you to change an existing item. All of them inject their input or into the same type of workflow that I just described, in which effectively uh, it's pull request based. It um, uh, it basically gets reviewed um, by an appropriate number of reviews and by the bot um, for, uh, for, for correctness of, of the attributes and ultimately actioned or declined depending on whether it's, it's something that, that uh, is deemed as, as appropriate or something that basically people think, well, somebody did this by mistake or they, they were just trying things out and obviously it's not something we're allowed to go through. <clears throat> um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, but actually, um, Cigar is also on the call. We'll will show that to you <clears throat> very quickly. Is um, the integration between the catalog and the developer IDE. So, um, uh, if that's okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Cigar will share his screen and and show you how that works. Okay. Cool. Um, thanks, Miguel. Um, let me let me share my screen. Hopefully, I'm sharing the right screen. Let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yes, I think it's yes we can see it on your screen now. Yep. Okay, okay cool. Um, so as, as Miguel suggested that we went beyond um, providing the capabilities for people to come and discover the reusable items through the backstage and created an um, IntelliJ plugin. Um, so what you see here is, is the plain IntelliJ, um, the, uh, the landing page. And at the right bottom, you see something called a service discovery. Um, when people click on the service discovery, what they get to see is very similar to the uh, taxonomy view, what you saw in the uh, backstage portal, but this gives an opportunity for the people who are using the IntelliJ um, during the development process to come and discover these items and see what's in it for them in terms of uh, reusability. Right? Um, I don't want to go inside each of these components and show the um, reusable items. I think um, some of these maybe um, in terms of data protection, we may not be able to show. But what this gives is people can come here, discover the different taxonomies associated with it, and discover um, and search through the different tree of the taxonomy node and then select a simple um, reusable item and see the basic description about the reusable item. 
the if it's an api look into the api definition of the reusable item uh, whether it's an open api or um, an async api and and see if if they can start readily reusing or maybe if if it's something uh, if they need to custom develop that and then they can do a custom development based on that uh, the idea actually um, yes yeah. so sorry to, just to add here so the the idea behind this is to operate on the basis of removing as many impediments as possible to the reuse and discovery journey and and thus even though backstage uh, offers obviously a, a web uh, a web interface um we basically uh, uh i guess through uh, I guess interfacing through with uh, with 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 uh, our engineering population we come to the point where they say, well, but you're forcing me to switch screens and I'm actually writing code. So moving, moving to, to a different, a different interface and um, effectively doing the discovery there and then copying and pasting or transporting back is awkward. So what can we do to streamline that journey? And so the the plugin is a is a response to that, so that the, the engineer can do the the discovery uh, of whatever item uh, or whatever capability they're searching directly within the, their IDE, um, and ultimately actually take uh, things like code snippets, like test cases, like code templates straight from the catalog and directly into um effectively the, the their coding window okay so that's kind of the idea behind this if there aren't any questions at this stage i i, I would say claire that uh we kind of demoed what we wanted to demo and uh, happy to go through any questions or, or, or the, the discussion phase of the presentation. Yeah.